Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode, wow, 30. Man, this is already 30 shows too many. Episode 30 of Thick and Thin with LB and Duty, as always. The man with the plan. The man living in a dungeon. Dark. <laughs> hard to see. Doesn't pay his bill. L-B-S-U-T-K-E. What's up, LB? What's up, too old to play? Oh, God, it's just sad. I can't even, I don't want to be on you for that long. It's Listen, just, I, I, it's depressing. It's a little cloudy out today, so I don't have as much sunlight coming through the window. Jeez. And I've got the lights turned off in the other rooms. You're not. It's like he's in the back cave. He's in the back cave. And in the All light right. cave, the man from Canada, or Canada don't, I don't really know. Um, a resident foreigner, Mr. Hitman. What's up, Hit? How you doing? Uh, how's it going, guys? What's it like in that foreign country? Uh, warm. Warm and bright. And, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> I have a cold right now. And uh, if I sneeze uncontrollably, please, that's my what, apologies. That's what mute's for, buddy. That's what mute's for. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Bringing her back for the what? Fifth, fourth time? Fifth time? I don't even know now. I think it's fourth time. Fourth time. I like it. Little Miss Tiff Electrify Fari. What's up? How you doing? Hey guys, what's going on? I don't know why you keep inviting me back, but I'm trying so well, here I am. We have to counterweight the Canadians. We have to make sure that America's presence is always greater than the Americans. It's, it's all about diversity. Right, yes. Small, slight amounts of diversity, but not not too much. Just just a little bit. Uh, on this week's episode, we're going to talk about the Halo 4. Mr. Canada actually went out and played it, got a hands-on. Um, but before we do, I've got some site announcements. LB, from the depths of the darkest, deepest areas of your house, do you want to give them a little bit of a a sampling of what we're doing on Tool to Play this week? <laughs> sure, Hit why not? Up, well, it looks like the uh, Halo Reach site mixer this Thursday is happening. Once again? Once again, excuse me. Had a little digestive issue. <laughs> it happens, it's fine. Um, last Thursday was great. Had another time, had like four rooms going, so it's like just happening. People are showing up, having a good time, yelling at each, each other, giving peach punches and teabagging. And... Peach punch as well. Oh, peach punch. Is that I like a clam slam? Correct, what is that? Cla- I think it's the same as a clam slam, okay. peach punch. I know this now. You know, taco suplex. I, I don't know. What wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I just threw that, that one out there. That's so, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Copyright that. Done. Uh, there's also the Halo Reach free for all sign up is still open, so I'm not really sure when Fire is going to cut that off. But since he's going to PAX this week, it's probably not going to be this week. So I think you got a little bit of time left to sign up for that. Uh, it's Tuesday, which means it's the Battlefield 3 Community Weekly Play Date at 9 p.m. Central on Two Old Plays Battlefield 3 server. Sweet. I think it's going to be Conquest this week and uh, Two Fats in the Room. Is that correct, Two Fat? Too Conquest? Fat. We're doing Conquest? Did, did you get uh, Hurricane up? Are you still there? No, he's not there anymore. Huh. All right, Hurricane got Too Fat. That's oh, well, fine. someone else is going to kill us. Uh, the poker night on Saturday. I Unfortunately, I was not able to attend, but if anybody was there, did you guys go? Did you? Uh, no, I, Guild Wars 2 is this week. There's no way. I did nothing but Guild Wars 2 this entire weekend. Yeah, I'm sorry. Tiff, did you do the poker? No, I hadn't really played any video games for over a week. Wow. What I know. sucks. I know. It's sad. very sad. It is sad. But I did get some Skyrim in last night, so oh, I feel a little nice. better. That's nice. I like the Skyrim. I'm a fan. And that's uh, that's kind of it about site news, unless Duty wanted to add anything. No. I mean, the only thing, uh, it's kind of a, a dull gaming week with all the, uh, well, Here's the thing. I feel like a lot of people are actually playing games, which is kind of cool. Because um, Guild Wars 2 hit, so I think about 30 or 40 Tool to Play members are in that guild that we started on the Gates of Madness server. So, uh, yeah, man, playing games, actually. Which is weird, because I haven't played games in a long time either. It's kind of nice to actually have some video games to play. It's nice to talk about them, but it's even better when you actually play them. So um, that's what I've been doing. And I've, been, I've been hitting up the Guild Wars. I'm a huge fan. We're going to talk a little bit about it on the show. Um, but mostly, I think, looking at these show notes from hell. Not a lot of time for Guild Wars. Kind of bumped off the docket, if you will. Sorry, right, we'll do it next week. Um, but, of course, just a reminder for everyone out there, if you've got time and you're doing nothing and you want to go to your first awesome LAN party, don't forget the tool to play LAN. 
November the 9th through the 11th in Chicago. Uh, tickets are still available. Go to uh, toolplay.com forward slash land and you will get uh, instantly shot out to our Kickstarter page where you can check it out. So don't forget that. The single occupancy rooms are gone. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So we sold did out you, of, what did we sell huh? out of the, so all the Kings are gone, right? Well, did you, did you double check? Yeah, they're gone. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Look, so who says ready? those are single occupancy? That's a good point. Well, okay. It's a good point. Single bed <laughs> rooms are gone. Right. Let's, let's put it that way. That's what I was like. A single occupancy. I don't even know they had this rule, but yeah, no. So the King size beds are all gone, which I think were the cheaper ones. Right. Is that correct? Right? Wasn't that cheaper? 75 bucks. 75 bucks. Yeah. So now you get the doubles. Uh, I think they are 85 bucks or something like that or 80 bucks. Um, so yeah, give it a check. You'll see once you go on the total play for slash land page, there is a link to the hotels with the group rate. Head on over there and double check. Make sure you get your stuff before it is sold out because that will mean you have nowhere to sleep. No room in the inn. So don't do that. Um... What do you guys want to do? What do we talk about first? You want to talk about Halo? You want to just get right into this madness? Let's let's do it. Let's, let's do it, man. Let's bring in Roger. He let's went to the <laughs> secret Canadian stolen code event, or however the hell it happens in Canada. Stolen yeah. So what? isn't it some <laughs> no French? Knows. Isn't some French fucking code or something that gets stolen? And then I can't understand this language. No. What? He speaks. Oh. It's language. <laughs> so it make any sense right now. So <laughs> give him a little bit of of background. Then what exactly did you go to? And you know, start from there. Uh, well. Um, Comic Con North, it's called, um, or the company is called. They started this thing called Fan Expo. Uh, and it was in Toronto. Uh, it's a big comic book, um, movies, gaming convention. Uh, MLG was there in 2008, uh, and this year, Microsoft had Halo Four, uh, like a Halo Four booth, and it was basically a big. Think of a room that was 20 feet by 20 feet, cut it in half, and they had eight. Um, screens in each room, hmm. so there's so two lineups. 10 by 10? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, four screens on each side of the wall. Uh, two rooms of so eight, um, and they had two lineups going in, and you had to line up, and you walked right in, and you got that hands on on some Halo Four. Sweet. Well, so was it? Was there a long line, or was it sort of like you just kind of? Uh, the lines were play? usually about thirty minutes long. Usually, uh, the game. Well, maybe less than twenty to thirty minutes. Really? Each game only wow. lasted about five minutes because the way they had this uh, the setting set up, and uh, so the line was going by about twenty to thirty minutes. Wow, that's really not that bad. I mean, was it was it packed or was there a lot of people or was it just like? Yeah, there were a lot of people, but the majority of the people that were at this event were really there for the comics and oh, the, wow. the meeting the celebrities and getting their autographs. Halo was all the way in the corner, uh, in the gaming section. And it had its own draw, but it was out of the way of all the comic book people. So I don't know if everyone got to see it. Wow. But I took advantage of it. <laughs> That's crazy. So most most of it was, I mean, was was there, an, there was obviously the attraction for Halo 4. I'm sure a lot of people went specifically for that. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah. saying that most of it was just kind of people for the comics. They were like, oh, what's that Halo thing? In that yeah, color? everyone was dressed up in cosplay. Uh, I have a video up on my YouTube coming up this uh, today, actually. It shows everyone dressed up. It was quite amazing. Uh, it's kind of like PAX East, but way crazier. Really? Uh, yeah, it's that's definitely. No definitely. kidding. Oh wait a minute. When you mean like PAX East, what other games were there? Oh, um, oh, uh, good thing you asked, Elvi. Um, Assassin's Creed Three was there. I got to play that. I actually liked it. They sh- it had multiplayer, eight p- eight screens, and then they had eight screens of campaign where you got to uh, drive around a boat and. Uh, boat to boat combat. It was actually huh. kind of cool. Um, they also had a uh, Zombie U uh, with Nintendo. Oh, the Wii U? They had that out the there? The Wii U was there. Uh, which was kind of weird because they had all the cables plugged into the wall. Like a little hole in the wall and the cable went in there. You never saw the console. So you got to see the controller only, but no console. Hmm, that's interesting. So it was a glory hole for console? <laughs> yeah, basically. It was kind of weird. It's like they still don't want... It's like they don't want you to see how it looks like. Well, that makes sense. The funny thing is, at the end of the day, when they were uh, disassembling everything, they opened it up, and I got to see, and I took a couple pictures. But I saw that to people in private. (laughs) Wow, was it just like an actual? Was it just like a Mac or something, or is it actually? It looks like it looks like the Wii, but add maybe twice the size to it in length. 
Interesting. So it was, it was really long. That's what she said. Um, what else? <laughs> Sorry. They had like uh, Just Dance and a whole bunch of other games were also there. That's cool. So no one cares about those games. Let's be honest. Yeah. No, yeah. no one cares. Back to Halo 4. So Halo let's 4. get to Halo 4. Uh, let's go with the first impressions and what you sort of thought maybe you liked or didn't like. Let's just the generalized things before we get into sort of the specifics. Generally, how do you feel about Halo 4? I overall liked the game. Shocker. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Shocker. It's not a shocker, but... I liked it more than than I like Reach, so that's already saying a little bit a lot. Um, a lot of people in line were saying this is what Reach should have been, or this feels like a Halo 2.5, like a cross between Halo 2 and 3. Everyone's impression in the lineup was very positive. They liked it. And I also was in line with uh, some former Halo uh, Pro MLG players. Uh, his name was Mad Max. Okay. He was there with his he was there with his buddies, and I got their impressions as well from the game, and they're very positive. They liked it. If, if everything I said about Halo Reach, like that's what they were saying. Like this this is what Reach should have been. This feels like a Halo two three kind of game. All right, but doesn't it sort of feel like that's what people said when Reach came out? And I mean, I guess this is this is the, the, Reach, the thing about that. No, I mean what they said about Reach was more of um, this feels more like Halo one. That's what a lot of people were saying for Reach. That's what Bungie was saying. They tried to get go back with the the pistol and all that all that feeling from Halo One. They were trying to remake. Uh, trust me, they were saying that. I, I'll be. I can see you in the camera. You're I, I was like, what? The, the yeah, feeling I don't was. Know. I read a lot of a lot of articles that they were trying to make the feel of Halo One, which they didn't do. Um, so. People are now saying that Halo 4 is more like a 2 and a 3 rather okay. than a 1. I mean, is that, I guess that's what the people want. Is that what you're you're getting at? Is that Halo 1 was sort of like no one even wanted that in the first place? And because in my opinion, this is, I think it's a general opinion, but most people would agree. And I'll, I'll ask you too as well. Halo 2 is probably the best. Am I, am I, is that just nostalgia or am I, am I wrong? I, I in would agree. That? I would agree. I mean, out of what's out so far, yeah. If out of I'm what's out so far. One, I want Halo 2. So. It, like, which one, Tiff, were you into the most? If you were to, like, say, you know, if you were to pick one, I don't know when you got into Halo when you started playing it, but and that probably has a role in it. But which one did you like Yeah, the most? I'm trying to think. I, I played some Halo 2, but I think I spent most of my time in Halo 3. Yeah. And that's just because that's the game that was out and the game that everybody was playing. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy Halo 2, because, I mean, I love some of the, the multiplayer maps and all that from Halo 2. Those are some of the best maps that you ever come out with. Yeah, I have, to, I have to agree. I mean, I think a lot of it for me is probably nostalgia. I had the most fun building a clan and starting to able to play and all that stuff with Halo 2. Uh, and Halo 3 was probably a more well-rounded game, I think, overall. I mean, what do you think, LB, out of, out of the series? Which one do you sort of attribute as being the pinnacle of the series so far? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, I didn't prefer Halo Three. I, I like hit scan. I like to be right. able to throw grenades and actually see them after the balance go farther than eight inches. Right. Um, I, I just felt it was smoother than Halo Three, and uh, I mean, Halo Three did move forward as far as like you know, you had the map editor and everything like that. So you know, com- community got more involved with it. I just. I didn't like it. I think the net code was worse in Halo 3 than it was in Halo 2. Right. So, you know, if I had to go back and pick one where I want it right now back and playing, it's going to be, a, you know, Halo 2. Halo 2. Yeah. Yeah. And so is that what you think then, Hit? I mean, is your overall impression right now is that it has that more Halo 2 feeling? Or, uh, I mean, what do you think? It, it, it seems to be a it, combination of everything, like looking at the videos. It doesn't seem like they were trying to recapture the essence of one of the older games, like trying to fully copy Halo 2. That's good. It felt like an evolution in the series, the proper evolution. So, like, what 2 and 3 were a mixture of the two evolving with the armor abilities and the Call of Duty add-ons and right. stuff like that. And that's and that's a great question too. It's the the one thing that I was I've been wondering this whole time. And I think even the people in the forum at Tool to Play and just around the internet in general, uh, does that type of stuff get in the way of it being Halo? 
is it okay to have these sort of, you know, ordinances? They call them ordinances, right? I can't remember what they call yeah. them in, in Call of Duty, but it's basically the same thing where they, they drop something down from the sky and then you get to use it. Uh, I mean, it's a blatant ripoff. Not that it's a bad thing. Uh, I think the best way to, you know, evolve something is to take bits and pieces of things that, that work elsewhere and put them in. But does it still feel like Halo to you? Does it still feel like it's it's in that universe and it's a lot of fun to play? Or how, I mean, how did yeah, that come off? It still feels like Halo. Like <clears throat> the care, the ordinance drops. There's two different kinds. There's um, a team one and a personal one. And the team one is basically the one that spawns at the beginning of the map. So everyone rushes to go rockets, or everyone rushes to go get a sniper. So they still have that, which Halo has always been known for. Right. And then they have the personal one where it it's not overpowered like the care packages in Call of Duty. They give you three options and they're totally separate options and they don't increase. Like you never get a nuke in Halo. Right. You always get either a shoddy, some sort of power up like an OS or an Viz, or a smaller weapon like a pistol or grenade uh, pistol. It was never more like the weapons never get better and better. It doesn't go from pistol to assault rifle to rocket. It, it never progresses like that. So I think this feels a lot like a proper evolution of what the care package should have been. Right. And and, and to be fair to Call of Duty, there's no nuke in it anymore either. I mean, they took a lot of those right. things out for that exact reason that they were ridiculously overpowered and it shifted gameplay and it, you know, it made it more singular. But that would be my second question. The big problem that I think the community has with, Halo, or with Call of Duty and most of the professional gaming community especially is that Call of Duty is very much a run-and-gun singular player game. I mean, it's in a multiplayer environment, but because of the way they did kill streaks and the way they've kind of set up their game, uh, a lot of the time you're just playing for yourself. You know, you, you, it used to promote you sitting in a corner, you know, trying to get your, your super kill streak up. And then eventually people would just not, it's almost like they weren't even playing with one another. You know, does that, you think that's something that could maybe happen is that people are going to be trying to get these ordinances all the time? Or, I mean, how does it, how does an ordinance, I guess, work? Like, how do you well, get one? the ordinance work um, like a power meter. So like, like something like Street Fighter where your super, super move charges. Um, you get points for getting assists, kills, and then that meter fills up. And then the ordinance pops up on your screen. And then you just, wherever you aim and you choose what you want, it'll drop right there in like two seconds. What I found is it's it's not going to increase my gameplay anymore. Like, sure, I'll get a scatter shot one time, get maybe three kills and get another ordinance drop. I'm not going to get a scatter shot again because I already have it in my, in my hand. Right. So uh, maybe I'll get an OS and give it to my teammate rather than keep it for myself. Right. So there's a little That's bit of what strategy. I found a lot of people doing. They were passing stuff off to their teammates because they were either running out of ammo or they needed help killing more people. And what do you guys think about the ordinance thing, uh, Tiff? I mean, do you think it's do you think it's the right move for them? I, and I know a lot of people are saying it's a blatant ripoff. I don't think they care, and I actually don't. That doesn't really sway my feeling on it. Uh, what do you think about them going in that direction as sort of the Call of Duty, you know, way of doing things? Yeah, this is actually the first I've heard about this with okay. the game, so I'm kind of trying to figure out how it all would work. I mean, I think it's a pretty neat concept that they are putting that in there and giving the ability, um, like Hit said, that they could pass off things. And I think as long as there's that ability to kind of have that team aspect, it'll still feel like Halo. And right. that's one of the things that, you know, I don't play a lot of Call of Duty because it does very much seem a lot of times like it's not a team game to me. Right. I mean, what do you think, LB? Are you are you embracing this idea of um, taking that Call of Duty model, or are you are you wary of it? I mean, what do you think? Well, in the beginning, I was a little bit worried about it because yeah. we, you know, when you first heard about it, you're like, oh shit! So you know, you're gonna have someone just camp there, sit, and hopefully get an orange drop or a sniper or rockets, and then they're just gonna cycle through the whole damn thing. But as more information came out, and what Hit said gives a little bit more reassurance that. Yes, you're going to still try to do everything you can to get those drops, but it's not a game breaker. Right. You know, it may just be an assistance during the game. You know, you, like you said, you might be running out of ammo or you, you built up and now you get a pistol or something like that. Still a decent weapon, but it's nothing where it's just going to be like you've got one guy farming the whole time and then getting ready to shit on the other team when the rockets drop. So, yeah. I mean, and, and it's. I, and, I, and I know, again, there's a lot of like, you know, a lot of people saying like, why are they copying and this and that? But the truth is any really, any great game, any game out there that really innovates 
is generally taking an idea that they see somewhere else and then they improve upon it and make it their own. I mean, if anyone wants to see the best example of that in video games, go go download World of Warcraft, right? And everyone uses that as the best, best example because, simply put, they took every MMO that had ever come out, simplified it, distilled it down to one, you know, easy to install, easy to use, accessible, great interface, and 12 million people played it, right? I mean, it's not, there's nothing new in World of Warcraft. It's not a new game. There's no new concepts there. Uh, and even in their expansions following, they generally say, what is my competitor doing right now? Let's copy that and put the Blizzard stamp on it and we'll make it great. Uh, and I think Halo do- has every right to do that as well. And I'm, I'm, I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, as long as the gameplay is there and as long as it feels like Halo, I think that's my biggest concern. Am I, am I still in the Halo universe but has it evolved enough for to give me a reason to play it again, right? I mean, that's every time I put in Halo now, I always feel like, oh, crap, I'm playing Halo again. And so there's that part of me that constantly wants it to be a new game. But if it goes too new, then people are like, well, this isn't Halo anymore, and it sucks. And so I don't envy, you know, 343 to try to, you know, tie that line, and, or rather tow that line, because it's tough. I mean, it's tough. So what are some of the things you didn't like, Hit? That, like, going in, I know you have, uh, in the show notes, you've got some things you liked and and things you didn't, what specifically did you sort of not enjoy about the gameplay? Uh, the main thing um, that I didn't like was ammo. Ammo seemed to be a big problem. Oh, really? Um, I ran out of ammo pretty much every game, and I've had, I had to find myself switching to another gun. I, I'm not trying to say that I'm, I was really good and I was killing everyone, that's why I was running out of ammo. It was more like just I just naturally ran out of ammo. Hmm. Like, and... Everyone on the map doesn't have a BR in their hand because there are so many options for loadouts when you die that not everyone was choosing a BR or DMR or AR. So ammo was scarce on the map um, for you, the gun that you want to use, like if you like the BR. That was the one thing I didn't like. Um, other than that, um, little things like the sound of the sniper gun or oh, really? uh, grenades. The sniper didn't seem as powerful as it used to. It kind of just seemed like a fast, like little bullet, like hmm. like nothing, nothing like boom. There's a big bullet coming at you. No, nothing like that. Yeah, I heard but they, they used sniper. Little... It's supposed to be like silent and deadly. That's yeah, true. This thing was more silent and deadly. Than <laughs> deadly <laughs> is it Definitely. is it less powerful? It. Would you say this the sniper's less no, powerful? No, no, not at all. No. Oh, okay. So just if, the sound. You're saying. If anything, you have to be more accurate, and you didn't have to leave your, leave your shot as much as previous Halo games. Oh, so it's kind of sight to sight. There's no uh, no lead time. Yeah, at all. it's it's. You can tell that the game is hit scan. Interesting. Definitely, you can tell. Well, that's. I, I think a lot of people liked hit scan. I mean, LB, you said you liked it, right? Or that you're, yeah, you're in favor absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, I think with online play, I mean, I know people like to, to poo poo hit scan, but you kind of need it, right? I mean, it's if you yeah. if you if there's no servers and everyone's, you know, you're living in California, I'm in, you know, Chicago, playing with yeah. you California folk make me want to jump off a building. And you need yeah, hit scan. And, and there's something stuff. to be said for when you know, you know, after four trigger pulls, the next one, okay, headshot, the guy's dead instead of sometimes. And I don't know if it's the hit scan so much as far as netcode, but you know, and, and reach, and then even in H3, you know, sometimes it's four trigger pulls, five trigger pulls, six right. trigger pulls, and then you think the shield's popped, and you're like, oh, headshot time? So The, the little thing that they improved on that this time, LB, is now they have these little hit markers on your um, reticle that pop up saying that you've made contact with the guy. See, so I the, love that. The little stuff. things like that is what they've included in the game that I like. Good. You know, you know, that's really funny you, you brought that up too, Hit, because one of the things I loved about, like, this was like Call of Duty 2, I think, that this that came out, was the hit marker. Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing, giving some sort of feedback when you're firing a weapon that says, okay, yes, you did get a hit. The, the great thing about that is when, you're, when you know, like with Halo, you always know, you're counting in your head, you know, okay, one shot, two shot, three shot, four, and then you know when you need to go to the head. You go body, 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 head, whatever. Um, it's great to have that feedback. If the game's telling you, yes, you got a hit, then you can count easily and say, okay, now they have no shields. I'm going to go for the headshot and go for the kill. So those are the kind of additions that I always love in a series when they do like the small things like that. It's nice to see that that's in Halo. Was that, was that not in Halo before? Is that, is that a new no, thing? It's the first time they've included it in the Halo game. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Every time before it's been a count or, you know, you see the shields pop and then in theory, the next headshot should take them out. So, mm-hmm. hmm. so what about the, I mean, I know you talked a little bit about the grenades. What exactly did you not like about them? Um, I mean, was it just, a, the feel? It's just, 
they felt more like um like a reach grenade where it seemed kind of flat when you threw it not like uh halo 2 where those things will bounce off like a basketball right um just little things like that so that's not so bad that's no no not really now what about what game types did you play i mean i know i think everyone here probably has a different love of game type. i am i am a ctf guy used to be like really into slayer I love the team games. So how, did you play any of those? I mean, what did they let you? It was try just out? Team Slayer, oh, really? uh, either four on four or eight on eight when they got both rooms versus each other. Um, but yeah, it was only Team Slayer, nothing else. So no, uh, no, no CTF or anything like that? No CTF, ball, nothing like that, no. Because yeah, I mean, I feel like in terms of doing like the ordinance and, and stuff like that, um, that really affects how, team play more, I would think. Yeah, than, how that would affect uh, objective right. game is, yeah, would be interesting to see. Okay. So talk a little bit about the, the, the weapons. I mean, I know that there's, it seems like in this halo, they've kind of just thrown everything under the sun in the game. Um, I was looking at some, some of this stuff from uh, the roster teeth when they went out there and showed a bunch of their stuff. There seems to be a shit ton of weapons. Are they all on map or are there some that are just relegated to the ordinances only? Depending on whether or not you've unlocked it uh, in your own, for your own player. Um, no, it's not max specific. It depends on your, how much you've experienced. Oh, so there's a, so they copied that kind of thing from from call. I didn't even know that. So there's a yes. there's a leveling up thing here. So you can customize your loadouts mid game or or before the game or after, and you can choose like your DMR loadout. Loadout it will be DMR. Secondary would be AR, uh, and then armor abilities, grenades, stuff like that. Oh, that's and kind of interesting. And use those in the games that you play in. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, LB, I know you, you're not much of like the go for the sniper guy. You're not much of the, you know, so I, how do you like this, lo- the loadout way, the way they're going with loadouts now? I mean, I know most people, at least I, I prefer um, when everything's on map, simply because one of the aspects of strategy that I loved about Halo when it came out was going for that weapon and using the map to control a, a power weapon. You know, you knew when, Rockets were going to respawn, and I used to have a little stopwatch on my my monitor, and I would be like, "Okay, thirty seconds to rockets," and that was a huge sort of fun strategy thing for me. So, what do you think about these loadouts now and it shifting gameplay into that direction? Well, I mean, it depends on kind of how diverse the loadouts are going to be. When when we first lo- learned about it, you know, I thought it was going to be like, "Okay, I'm running BR DMR." all the time. That's going to be my thing. Right. I want the long range of DMR and then the medium to short of, of BR. Um, I truly do like still map control and weapon control. I think if you take that out of the games, it, it's kind of you're going back to COD. Right. right. <laughs> you know, and you know, I like being able to you know, you have to send two guys to rocks, and then you have to send a guy to overshield, and then you have to, you know, one goes to a sniper, and then you don't want the noob to get the sniper to run over to those other team and right. drop it off in there. So yeah. I like that understanding and that type of control and gameplay. Right. Um, hopefully, if we do get to do those unique loadouts, where you eventually pretty much kind of get to do what you want, I mean, I'm sure you're not going to get that loadout that loads out with sniper, but... Yeah, no, you're not going to get any loadouts yeah. with sniper or rockets. It's just going to be stuff like BR, DMR. I don't even think you can load both um, both of weapons like that together. Yeah, no. that, would, that would seem overpowered. Yeah, I mean, you'll one still, of the things I love still have that one ordinance that drops right. like sniper or uh, rocket will drop somewhere randomly on the map. Are there actually uh, weapons on map then, or is it literally yeah, just? Yeah, oh, so, so there are weapons on map. Okay. We played on longbow, and the moment that the game starts, sniper drops, and you uh, in the middle of the map, top mid, and it actually shows like a little icon uh, of of the sniper and where it's located and how far it is away from you, like a waypoint. Oh wow! Now oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, that so is you had to run. Cool. It's kind of like um, I think uh, Gears of War did that. They showed where the gun is, but I don't think they showed how far away it was from you. But yeah, anyway. you would be able to bring it up on your on yeah. Your, yeah. So. Yeah. Starting weapon drops still are still there, and then randomly, maybe halfway through the map, um, a team ordnance drop will drop randomly in like one of maybe six different locations. I once I saw it drop in the middle of the map. Once I saw it uh, drop really far away or the far corner of the map. Um, that's kind of random, but I could see 
what dropped, where, how far away it was, and if anyone had picked it up yet. And I basically ran there, and then the, the thing disappeared, so I knew somebody had picked it up. Right. And then I went and killed a guy that had rockets. So it's kind of a mi- – they're mixing both. I mean, they're, they're using yeah, the loadouts, yeah. but they're still keeping the, the Halo flavor. I, mean, I like that. Yeah, yeah. How, I mean, how do you feel about it, Tiff, going into – I mean, I wouldn't say you're more of a casual player, but I know you started a little bit later in terms of Halo. Did you did you like this the the idea of you know having uh, loadouts and stuff like this, or would you rather it be just the map control sort of uh, way of going about things? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having a little bit of both because I, any of the games where I had to start with an AR, I was like pissed off because yeah, I was right. like, I want my battle rifle. Where's my battle <laughs> rifle? Um, you know, so I, I like that aspect. I I think they're heading in the right direction. Yeah, I think overall, I got to say, I mean, it's it's a tough call. I, I love map control. I love one of the best things I loved in Halo was when everyone would rush sniper and then the guy that got it, the guy you didn't want to get it would get it and you would just kill him. That was like the ultimate yeah. betrayal, yeah. like <laughs> funniest nights ever. You would just be like, hey, that dude's going for sniper. Oh, he got it. All right, let's just grenade him and kill him. And yeah, someone would inevitably get booted out of the, the game or something like that. So I do I do love that sort of thing. And well, that, it sounds like that's still going to be in the game. Right. And even uh, probably even more so now that there's that beacon telling you like, hey, here's a power weapon. Everyone, let's converse and, and blow each other up. I think, but it, I think that's great, a good yeah, thing, yeah, that's though. It like, gives the little guy a chance. He, he doesn't have to be pro timing with his clock anymore. You know what I mean? Right. He doesn't have to sit around with a stopwatch. Right. And, and I agree. And it brings, I think the cool thing about that, too, is it brings the fight to a location. Uh, it creates the necessity for multiple people to meet up and actually fight, mm-hmm. which... In ha- in Halo and a lot of games like this, you'll have these huge maps and they're great and they're beautiful and they have all these different levels and but people co- seem to congregate into one area, uh, yeah. and creating a reason for those people to go out and go to these different locations is really what enhances gameplay. There's nothing worse than like fighting on a map in Halo and all of the battle takes place in one location, and that's kind of the problem with Call of Duty um, is that you they create a lot of bottleneck and a lot of places where there's battles in certain locations because they don't have that incentive to go somewhere, at least within, um, you know, team deathmatch. Whereas halo, if it's like, Hey, here's a giant rocket. If you get this, you're going to blow shit up. Everyone's like, well, hell I want that rocket. Yeah. Right. So, and it kind of helps again. I mean, I'm, I understand the spawn trap whole mentality, but I like, I like it maybe not being so imperative in, uh, you know, halo four. If you do, have those random, you know, rocket drops or, or sniper drops. So at least, you know, if a team's got your spawn lock and you get a chance, you know, the rockets are coming up, at least, all right, now they're going to move or at least get some people out of there so you got a better chance to break that lock or actually, you know, get your ass out. Right, right. And, I mean, we can talk about that for days, but the, the thing that I think really, really gets on people's nerves and probably the biggest point of contention uh, has got to be the armor abilities. And the first question I got to ask you, Hit, when you went down there to play, was there, in fact, a jetpack? Are we seeing jetpacks? Are they coming back? <laughs> what, people no, were there so was no jetpack there, but it, I'm not saying that it's not in the game. It just wasn't in the build that we had. So you there you can confirm, so far at least, you could not so use So far, jetpack. still no jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what is this thruster pack then? Thruster pack is basically the replacement for evade. So it would... It, whatever direction you're pointing in, it would like kind of like push you in that direction. It wasn't as far as the leap as the evade. Um, it was more like a little gentle push, and uh, you couldn't use it more than once. And the cooldown time gotcha. was really long. So, what is it then that makes people so pissed about? Now, this goes out to anyone. What is it that makes people so pissed about the jetpack? What does anyone here love the jetpack? I mean, not any of you. No, it sucks. No, so, no. Tiff, you don't want you don't like the jetpack either. No, it's Halo. Like you should be on the ground. Like jetpack was probably the worst thing ever. Wow, it breaks the it's, map. It breaks the map. It, That's your. It does. It's, I'm, it's I'm horrible. indifferent about it. I don't it's really it's, care it's, for it's it. weird. Just, You're not okay. supposed to fly. <laughs> well, you do have a shitload of you know heavy armor on it. it. It does kind of, I guess, break the immersion, if you will. But I always found that I loved. I don't know, man. I'm crazy. I I like the jetpack. I would I would use the jetpack pretty much nine times out of ten. If it was available, oh, so I'd you're use one it. of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, <laughs> I'm an asshole. There's there's nothing I love better than taking the jetpack up to a certain location or uh, I can't remember the name of the map on on Reach, but there was the that really multi level uh, level tiered map. What was that one called? And they countdown countdown yeah countdown. 
Countdown was the greatest. You would just like, you know, go from place to place and snipe and then jump down and jump back. I like that type of gameplay. I think it adds. Or what's it? Sword base. Was sword base. I don't think so. I think it was countdown. Uh, Yeah. It was the giant circle, right? Where there was like, I don't know. I didn't play enough Halo. But anyway, I like that stuff. Like, I like that. So uh, put me in, put me in the four category. (laughs) What's wrong with me, man? No one else liked it. It's it's just me. For me, it added a different layer. So what? What things are coming back then? Hit like what can we expect out of these armor abilities? Well, uh, uh, hologram came back and it's exactly the same as um, the Reach version. Um, hard light shield is basically the new um, ar- uh, armor lock. It just basically goes right in front of you like a like a handheld shield, and oh, you hold it for however long you want. The only thing I didn't like about it is the moment you let go of it, there was this like two second animation where you were really vulnerable. I don't. Maybe they'll fix that. I don't know. And then the other one was Promethean Vision and let you uh, send out a pulse that would see through walls and show you where enemies were. That's a big thing for people. Talk a little bit about that Promethean Vision. It wasn't really that like overpowering as, as much as I've heard or read. It, because the, the pulse is the only thing that will let you see stuff, it doesn't show you the whole map at the same time. Only where the pulse is. So... You only get one shot at it. You only get one pulse to shoot out. And then you see where they are, and then you turn it off, and you go and kill them. It didn't seem overpowering to me, at least. Well, a lot of the pro players, like a lot of people I was talking to recently, were just saying that everyone's going to run Promethean Vision. Like, there's no there's no instance yeah. where you wouldn't pick it. I mean, how I did you think about Prometheum that? Promethean being the main, yeah, definitely out of the four that I got to try out, it was definitely the main one used. Hmm. Um, is there, can you see any variants? Like, what else would you pick besides Promethean? I guess that would be worth using. It's, it seems like seeing everyone on the map is pretty over more overpowered than using a jetpack. I'd say. No. Uh, yeah, but with the other abilities that we don't know about, like invisibility, um, and th- those specialization classes where it'll only make you an outline rather than a figure. Right. Uh, there's so much we still don't know, and how. How the final version of Promethean Vision will work, we, we still don't know. But right now, it didn't seem that overpowering. So what you played then, I guess, is is very much a beta. Um, did they say yeah. anything about like things being left out or, you know, I mean, because you came to be, you seem to be talking like this. There may be more things there. I mean, was it yeah, sort of a shell the, of a from game? What they've talked about and what I've read, there's more stuff we haven't seen. Uh, we Like, I didn't see the... Um, What's that gun called? The um, real gun. Uh, there was no real gun. Um, there wasn't the Promethean DMR version, whatever that thing's called. Oh, right. So that wasn't there either. There was a lot of guns still missing, a lot of armor ability still missing. So it wasn't the final version. But like LB said yesterday in side chat, they could change so much in that game. Yeah, that they've, they, they've definitely they got some idea. time. Yeah, they definitely got yeah. time. I mean, and I guess uh, looking at some chat questions, how did the, and this is a big one for me, and this is what killed the difference between Halo Reach for me or even Halo 3 to Halo 2 um, was how the player jumped, how the player ran, and the speed of the player. Now, I know everyone in, in Halo 4 has sprint, right? That's just baseline for everyone. No. Um, so how does that, how did the player, how did that feel? Just the the... The height of the jump, the the weight. The, a lot of things. A lot of people used to say that Halo Three felt really floaty. That was a lot of uh, the terminology people used back then when we went from Halo Two to Halo Three. How does it? How did it play? Just the feel of the game. Did it feel it like it was on point? It, it, it. I don't know about on point, but it didn't feel floaty like a Halo Two or Three. Uh oh. Oh, he froze. Oh God. Oh God! Oh, no. Look at that face, the bacon. This is the best. This is the best oh. freeze ever. <laughs> Canadian bacon. <laughs> Love the bacon. See, r- oh see, right God. when we, right when we actually want to answer <laughs> someone's question, <laughs> he goes, he goes dark. Canada was like, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> uh, technical difficulties. Well, either either way, I mean, I think that the big thing we and we can discuss it here, if if hit ever does come back. Um, how the how the floatiness felt. What what did you guys like in terms of the Halo Two, Halo Three series? Which one did you like more? For me, it felt like Halo Two always had that a better feeling to it, uh, and I think that's one of the things I didn't really like in Halo Three is it, it did feel floaty for me. Um, the jumping, yeah, Halo, like yeah, it definitely was much more 
wait list, but you could also adjust that to in your custom games. Yeah, they gave you that ability. I guess I guess for me, the big the big thing is jumps for me in Halo 2 was a part of why I loved Halo 2. Um, everyone remembers Lockout. It's, it's really one of the better maps in the series. And doing some of those jumps were kind of the difference between a good player and a bad player. Um, and it was one of the things I think got lost within Halo 3. It's sort of that the float kind of cut down on the ability to do some of these like really impressive jumps. I mean, or, and maybe I'm talking on my ass, but wouldn't you agree LB that the jumping in Halo two, um, was kind of what made it a bit of a gem. It was sort of like the hidden gem, the, the thing that once you mastered made you a little bit different from the guy playing right next to you. No, I, I know. I totally agree. I think the Halo two was a more natural feeling to it where, you know, even now on, on, uh, Fanny Clan Knights will, will play Halo 3 a lot. When I go back to it and I jump, I'm like, oh my god, because I feel like I'm just wee right. floating in the air. So I prefer whether it be the gravity or whatever it is to Halo 2 than to Halo 3. Um, Tiff is correct. You know, you can always change that in custom games, but I, you know, custom games are fine. But you know, if I'm going to go into matchmaking, you know, I don't want to be floaty man the whole time i, I liked right. like you said the more skilled jumps in halo 2 where you knew okay i have to jump on this crack to make that jump you know maybe you know like you said lockout from getting from uh, top center to snipe two right you know that quick little jump that was jump, big jump and yes. if you didn't hit it right you were off the side or you're bouncing off the wall so yeah and if, or if you played ball and uh, on lockout there was that yep. jump off the corner to, and then you yep. you know it's a huge advantage if you can make that jump from corner to corner that was one of those things that you know once you got that down whether you were awesome at at actually sniping or any of the more technical things about the gameplay uh, if you mastered jumping you felt like you you at least had an advantage in some point I mean, which one did you like, Tiff, more? I mean, in terms of the jumping, are you are you more of the Halo 3? We're getting a little bit, the chat's kind of interesting because there's kind of a both sides thing going on there. So I'm, I'm apparently not right. So what do you think? I mean, I definitely, I think it felt more natural in Halo 2, but it was more fun in Halo 3 because you could make some of those, you know, ridiculous more intricate jumps. jumps and ridiculous jumps that, you know, just you're like, wow, I jumped over there. Right. Yeah, I mean, I like that stuff. I, I don't know. I, like a bunch of people in chat are saying that there were some some jumps in in three. Uh, maybe maybe that's part of it. Maybe I just sort of lost the desire, I guess, uh, to try to figure those things out and didn't give it enough time. But it was one of those things where in Halo Two, I was all about it. Like I would try, I would watch videos and make videos of my own about jumps that you can make. It was kind of like a secret thing in Halo. Like, oh, can you do the lockout jump or you know, can you get up to snipe two faster and things like that where. I think you even saw a lot of the problems there in MLG where they would, I think they edited, right? I mean, LB might know more than me. Didn't they edit how, how the distance or something of jumping in MLG to make it more Halo 2-ish? Wasn't that part of they the... They adjusted the, the uh, you mean in Halo 3? Yeah, rather in Halo 3. If I'm correct, I think they increased gravity, but uh, it's probably wrong. But yes, you, you are right. It's either in Halo 3 or from Halo 4, the adjustment was there to make it more like halo 2 so right. roger do you remember which uh mlg when they did the gravity adjustment was that from h3 to h2 or was it from reach to h2 sorry ask that question again sorry oh boy <laughs> <laughs> technical difficulties For some reason i can't see myself on screen don't that, worry you look just as shitty as you do <laughs> it's not not gonna change Okay, sorry, what now, was the question? MLG did a gravity adjustment in either Reach or Halo 3 to make it more... Um, yes, yes it did. For uh, the, which it's one it was? Both, uh, both movement right? and uh, gravity. And so how did it feel, and we're going to go back since you obviously got cut off, how did it feel in Halo 4? Was it, because I mean MLG made those changes on purpose obviously, they liked the Halo 2 feel of things. How did it feel, sort of the run, the jump, all that stuff, the sprint being active for everyone? Was it cool? I mean, did you like it? Um, well, well, first off, let me start off with the sprint. The sprint seemed kind of weird from uh, – it wasn't the same as Reach. It was more like a Battlefield 3 kind of uh, jog where, like, you were moving up and down more. Hmm. Um, it, that seemed kind of odd. Um, but the movement, like uh, running and jumping, was more close – maybe a cross between 3 and Reach – like an in-between, 
you you didn't jump as high as Halo Three, but you didn't you definitely jumped higher than Reach. Let's just put it that way. So it was I mean you you liked it. It's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The movement was definitely a lot better. Like again, like what I said before, it's de- it more like an evolution in this series rather than um, Reach's kind of like throwaway throwback. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of that, I mean, using jumping as the the catalyst, if you will. Um, how did it play on the maps? How were the maps, uh, and how many did you play? I guess give just give us like a roundabout of the maps that you got to you got to test there out was, there. There was three maps: um, a drift, longbow, and uh, what was the other one? Haven. Haven. Yeah, right. Um, I played all three of them. Well done. Uh, <laughs> the last one that I played on was uh, a drift. It was the only time I got to play it. That one seemed like a clusterfuck. It was more like a countdown kind of map. Get right. Ugh. Um, yeah, I hate then, um, Longbow is my favorite. It was a, little, a lot bigger. It was outside. It was snowy. Uh, there was vehicles. Um, it was eight on eight. I, I actually liked that a lot. And then, um, Haven was more like, uh, Guardian slash Narrows kind of map where like architecture and multi-leveled. Right. That one was okay. But the only thing with that map is everyone was fighting in one area, which is top mid. Uh, I didn't really like that. Um, but other than that, um, I like the maps. The, the game played well. I liked it. So, I mean, in terms of them one fighting top mid on that, on was that Haven you said? Is there any yeah. reason for that? I mean, or was it just the way? Because for me, and I'll say it again, I, don't, I hate using Lockout so many times tonight, but the big thing with Halo 2 was the maps there were memorable. I remember the shit out of those maps. Even ones like Zanzibar that weren't really great for an MLG type of play lend themselves so well to vehicles and, and single bomb and like, you know, maps kind of felt like they were built on a purpose. Um, one of the things I don't like with that happened in Halo 3 was everything felt like, okay, you can use this map for anything. It can be used for MLG. It can be used for, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Whereas, um, I don't know, things felt very specific in, in Halo 2. Like things were, you know, this map can be great for this one thing. And you know, there's well, it was like a design there. flow to it, right? Yeah, like they yeah. had a they you, they had a vision uh, right. for that map. Did did it seem that way, or did you still get a generic feeling? And I could be wrong, and I'll let you guys comment on it as well. Um, but did it feel generic, or did you actually sort of see the potential in those maps? Do we lose sound on him now too? What is going on in Canada? Oh, you me button, me button. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's Canadian technology is awful out there. Uh, Longbow uh, was definitely the big team battle map, I could tell. Um, all three maps were symmetrical in, in a way, in a Halo way, basically. And no, you, all three maps could be used for all sorts of different game types, not just specifically to one thing only. Right. Well, I mean, I think that's, and I'll ask you guys, uh, I'll start with Tiff. Do, do, you, do, you, do you prefer the map that seems to be designed for one thing, or do you like the universalness of, and, I, and I'll go back to Reach on this one. A lot of what happened with Reach felt like they just put it in the player's hands and said, you guys design the map that you want. And they took this sort of lazy approach. Um, I don't know, and that, that might just be me. I mean, I, I just felt like they were sort of tuned it, out it was, a little bit. It was mainly because those maps were designed for a campaign. Right, I mean, th- those maps were taken out of campaign. Yeah. But doesn't doesn't that feel like lazy design to you to sort of say, yeah. okay, yeah. we don't have anything to ship. Let's just pull out of the campaign this one scene and just, they'll fight in it. I mean, w- what do you prefer, Tiff? What's what's the kind of things that you enjoyed in terms of the, the map structure? I definitely like maps that are customized for a certain game type because there's little details that they can put into those, you know, for like a capture the flag map, you right. know, put a bottleneck here, a bottleneck there so that the person carrying the flag can't get through easily. So, you know, I like maps that are customized. What do, what do you like, LB, in terms of the design structure? Well, I kind of, I don't know, I'm almost like a combination of things. Right. It's like, again, we go back to like Lockout, but in Lockout, you could play Ball, you could play True. King, you could play Slayer, you know, and you have three different uh, game types easily played on that but you know I did appreciate some game types you know what was that burial mounds when you did flag or bomb on that right you know that you know you you had your special way you like to go or even headlong you know rush it up the middle that's the way you do it you know it's they both had their advantages so I like the combination of both I don't like only one way so 
It's funny. Uh, uh, Tank is saying in chat that even ULB could have made a better map pack. <laughs> wow. That ship with Reach. That's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. I have to agree. I mean, I think the big thing that, and this will, we could even end on this, is that we could probably do another show on this. There's still tons of stuff to talk about. But for me, at least, with, with Reach... Um, it felt like, yeah, it was their swan song and you hear how like, you know, they were, they're pulling all the stops, but the big thing with reach felt like a real disconnect with MLG. And I don't mean MLG in terms of the company or, you know, but just the, the more pro player, they, yes, they gave them all these options, but they seem to say, we don't want to take a stance on how the game is played in a competitive state. So we'll put all the onus on you, uh, and you create the game you want while that's good. Um, one of the things that created such a gem with Halo 2 is that it felt like they had a real connection with those with the with the pro players as well to create these really fantastic competitive maps um, that worked well for everything. It doesn't seem like that's the case anymore. And I guess hit, I'll go to you first. Does it feel like there's that connection to MLG? And I, Deep talks about it all the time. That sort of MLG is kind of snubbing its nose now at, at Halo. Do you think Halo 4 has any chance of bringing the, the competitive community together, even on Tool to Play? I mean, do you think that's a possibility, or do you think it's sort of kind of left to the devices of everyone in their clan and what they feel like playing? No, it definitely seems like they're trying to make it more of a competitive um, game. Like, they're definitely trying. They're definitely talking to MLG pros and seeing what they like. All the settings that they've that I've got to play with seem like they're gearing towards a competitive um, direction. They're not definitely, they're not snubbing them out. That's for sure. But the things like what I said uh, last episode or the episode before that, about the no uh, live streaming right. feature and stuff like that. That's the only thing I, that I feel like they're not um, uh, helping out in with esports. It's just camera control and stuff like that for live games. Um, but Game game wise, they're definitely not snubbing competitive settings. You don't think so? No. So why why is it then? I mean, and maybe maybe we're asking too much, but do you not get the feeling that because they're sort of saying like we don't have the free for all camera stuff? I mean, all these games now that are coming out, and even Call of Duty, uh, is really connecting with. We talked about the same. I think this was last week that they're really connecting sort of with MLG, not MLG, but competitive gameplay and getting people together. Um, why, I mean, why is it that they don't do this anymore? What's the reason? I mean, and anyone can really answer. Do you think that there's a reason that they sort of are taking this hands-off approach? Or do you think they just figure, you know, let, we'll let the people do what they want to do. We'll just sort of, we'll just wait and see. What do you guys think? Nothing, huh? Um, <laughs> I love uh, the silence. <laughs> when I stump you guys, it's, that means I'm doing my job correctly. I think. Anybody know? Uh, well, this is well. This is the problem. If you, and unfortunately, three four three is is fucked. <laughs> I mean, right. if they if they specifically design the game or default settings or maps specifically for competitive people, well, you've alienated a huge section of right of your your uh, population. If you design it specifically for Oh, I just you know kind of hang out and real easy breezy everything like that. Well, now you just you know flipped up your finger to one of the most vocal right. populations of your player population. So it's hard. I, I don't know if you can really make everybody happy, and I think you just got to be able to give the tools to the people if you're not going to go to a specific route to make it very adjustable without breaking the map, without crapping on the the system itself right yeah that's, to me that's tough, to me it seems like they're just trying to make everybody happy that that's what it looks like to me and from playing it that's what it looks like to me like showing where where what weapon is dropping where to give everyone a fair chance to it right um giving everyone the ability to have any gun that they want either if you want a dmr you get a dmr if you want a br you get a br if you want an ar get an ar it feels like they're trying to get everyone into one standard um, um, game type rather than MLG and then... Uh, yeah, they don't uh, want to separate. All. They're definitely not separating them. They're trying to make them in one, and hopefully they're I, what they're banking on is everyone will like it. It's like the Oprah of FPS. You yeah, get but you, a, you, get you can't con. make everybody happy. It's just yeah. not right. possible. I think that's I think that's my worry, and, and it was said in chat too. I mean, the big thing with Reach was like, 
let's do it. Let's do everything that everyone wants. Let's and, and we'll see how that works. But I don't think that works. And and I think that, I, I don't either. I I think they have to pick their path. Yeah. I thought Reach was more segregated than any other Halo game. Like the MLG settings were completely different from vanilla Reach. Like, right, but that's divide between the two. That goes to what Tiff is saying, which I think is that if you try everything. Uh, eventually the people that are, are playing your game are going to go to their one direction. They're going to play their one type of game. They're going to take all the tools. And I don't know if, if this is a bad thing, but they, they create their own version of Halo 3 or Halo 4 or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, if I invite you in to play with me, you're like, oh, you're using this setting? Can't play. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. like, you get this sort of us versus them mentality. And it, it, it almost goes into what we were talking about with the clans episode. Uh, and it really does relate to that sort of mentality. It's just a human thing where you get your setting or you're in this version, you know, clans, let's say uh, you're in the clan that you love and you don't want to talk to anybody else because you have your clan. I feel like it's the same thing with Halo. Once you create a game that gives you so many tools and options, uh, you sort of alienate the people around you because you just say, well, this is the way I play Halo. And it, and it fits with Battlefield. Me and LB talk about it all the time. I mean, even Battlefield's got a game like that where there's hardcore and there's core. And a lot of people that pick their mode, they'll be like, oh, you play core? Yeah, I guess I'll play, but it's the shitty way to play. You know what I mean? Like, they sort of have mm-hmm. their their mentality about that. Um, and I think, I mean, to, to end it on this note, I'll says we're, we're kind of going over on time, but um, the big thing with me, I think what Tank said in chat, which is, there is no place for MLG. There's no, there's no benefit for them to cater to that. Um, I would argue that even though it's the small vocal minority, that's the trickle down effect in a video game that sort of everyone follows in line from, uh, when you have a, when you have a game like that, where the pro players and the people that you watch on a daily basis are into the game and promote the game, it really does. I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like it has a trickle down effect and, and you'll be more involved in the community. Um, you get this sense of like really wanting to know how the pro players play and sort of, you know, mimic your strategies or whatever off of those pro players. Uh, even at, you know, the older age that I'm at, I still would go watch VODs and do all these things during uh, Halo 2 and Halo 3 to better my play. So while I don't know that there's like a huge crazy advantage for them to cater to MLG, I, I do think that there is value there. And so I guess final question for, we'll start with, we'll go with Tiff and down the line. Do you see a value in Halo 4 um, really kind of playing to that that pro gamer? Or do you think it's just, it doesn't matter? I mean, do you think it's going it, to, either way, they're going to be successful, obviously. But in terms of community, is it is it a necessity or is it just sort of like a tack on? You know, I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. It's a tough question because I can really see both sides of it. No, oh, yeah, and the, that's tough. the pro players, you know, they're the ones that are going to promote the game. Those are the ones that you're going to see playing the game and watching their strategies. And you're like, oh, I want to be like that. Um, but then, you know, there's all the other the other huge um, consumer base that are, you know, the more casual players or you know the friends that to get together every Thursday night to play some Halo games. That's tough, Ali. What do you think? I mean, what would you rather see? Well, my specific gameplay, I mean, I kind of like a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, I, I like the competitive stuff. I don't want four straight hours of competitive stuff. I like a nice mix. But I do think if if they design maps with a good flow to them where it's, it's more than just you know, if you get one thing and you dominate the map, okay, the game is over. It needs to involve attacking and defense. You've right. got to have that flow. And kind of to touch on your whole, you know, watching professional things, and that's not just video games. People do that all the time. Right. You have people who golf, and they're like, "Oh, well, well, you just spent eight hundred bucks on a set of golf clubs. Well, you can go to Costco and get a set for two hundred with a bag. Why didn't you do that? Well, because you know I saw these, and some pros use them, and right. they're supposed to do X. So it, it's kind of ingrained into a lot of people, and I think they have to you have to put forth that effort to put forth that competitive nature of how the game is played. I mean, you're not out there to paint unicorns, you know, you're going to have a winner, you're going to have a loser. You're going to have somebody that gets to 50 kills. You're going to have someone to get to five flag drops. You're going to have someone to get to 150 points in ball. That's how it is. Right. Final thoughts uh, hit playing the game. It's coming out soon. We're doing a whole land about it. 
How, how do you feel, I guess, about Halo 4 and the future of Halo now that you've got a chance to, to put your hands on it? Um, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm more pumped than I was from before. It may have taken a little dip during that Call of Duty announcement, but it definitely bumped back up for me after playing it. I can't wait to try out the final version. Hmm. LB, excited or eh, don't care? I'm excited, but I'm pessimistic. Ooh. And, and yes, I, I have to agree. I mean, if I was to... Yeah, I agree with LB. Yeah. I think I think everyone on the panel... I, I don't know why that is, and I I think Reach left a, a shitty taste in everyone's mouth. I, I really do. Um, and 343 has a, a big chance here to sort of swing the pendulum the other way, but I am definitely pessimistic about Halo. Uh, it's a shame. You know, it's a great series. I absolutely love the game. Um They've got they've got such a hard road ahead. I mean, they just do. There's a there's a lot of variables here. Uh, so Tiff, you said you agree. I mean, are you excited? Are you you know are you ready to to play the game or is it sort of like oh Halo's coming out? I'm gonna get that no matter what. Don't really care. Yeah, I'm excited to play. It seems like they're really trying to put some decent innovations in there, but hopefully they're not gonna have that same Halo Reach effect where they put too right. many things into the game and kind of lose that Halo feel. Yeah, that's the that's the whole thing for me. I mean, honestly, if I if I was to sum it up, it's too much of something just isn't isn't good. I mean, it, it just it it there's too many variables. People get overwhelmed and they just they don't play or they segregate themselves into you know like I said areas and they ended up not playing with anybody, which you know kind of sucks. So I'm I'm hopeful. Uh, I hope they really you know get their shit together and get things out there. I really really hope uh, they put a lot more focus on clans and and more ways for people to connect it's it's a flaw within xbox live uh it's been there since after halo 2 but it's one of those things that if you if you get out there and you connect with the community and you make a game that everyone wants to play together whether it's pros or not uh, i think you've got a hit on your hands so anyway with that we're actually nine minutes over we could do this for hours um next week we'll probably do a little stuff on guild wars 2 and a couple other games Thanks so much to Hit for going out there and taking the uh, the sad the sad role of having to play Halo Four. That must have been tough for you. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate torture. it. We appreciate that's tough, man. <laughs> you had to play that game that sucks for you. I'm sorry. Um, LB, they want to know where they can go to get the nuggets of love that is the tweeting from you. If they wanted <laughs> to do that, how how could they connect with you on the internet? Well, you can either connect with me on Twitter at L-B-S-U-T-K-E, or if you're a Google Plus member, you can look me up at Mike Coppola. Look at you, moving to the Google wow, Plus. What's going on? the Google Plus. Who uses Google Plus? <laughs> <laughs> you got like four this friends. Guy, wow. Yeah. You're right. such a forward thinker. Right? No, who knew? All right, so to the other three people on Google Plus, if you'd like to hook up with L-B... You three can talk about how awesome it would be if you had something like Facebook to connect on or Twitter. Um, hit, where can they connect with you and your shitty internet that seems to go out of It's Google Plus at this time, actually. Um, <laughs> they can find me at, um, at Twitter at i6hitman and at my gaming live stream channel at twitch.tv forward slash i6hitman. And for some reason, I spelled your at below you as i6hitem. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. <laughs> I don't know what happened today. Been drinking a little bit of the Captain Morgans. And apparently that affects my ability to spell. Although it really affects it whether I'm drunk or not. So it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> Tiff, where can they find you at if they want to hit you up? I'm waiting for you to spell my name right. Let's see. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's spelled right. I don't know. No? Maybe? No. I, I don't see anything. Uh, but you can a- find me on Twitter at Electrify. And that's a K. With a K. There's no K, it ain't right. There's a K. There's a K. There's a K. There's a K, yeah. And if you want to hit me up and you want to learn how to be a better person, better human being, better dog owner, (laughs) got a dog back here, you can hit me up on Twitter at D-O-O-D-I-R-O-C-K. Don't forget, November 9th through the 11th, Chicagoland in Chicago-ish, 15 minutes outside. Um, Get your tickets now. Go to Kickstarter or go to tooltoplay.com forward slash LAN next week. I don't know. I feel like we should, I could do more Halo. I actually could do more Halo. It's really sad to say that. Uh, we'll see what we're going to do, but uh, don't forget to follow us on the YouTube. And if you're in the chat now and you're probably not really caring, uh, you can follow us on Twitch as well. 
With that, we will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for hanging out. Peace out.